Sixth grader Honor Santiago says the cultural insensitivity on display for lunch on the first day of Black History Month was palpable. They were like asking people if they wanted watermelon, and I was very confused because watermelon isn't really in the season. Watermelon plus chicken and waffles. That's what Nyack school district leaders say its food service provider offered students. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really think like my school or the company was capable of doing that and like just making like the kids like feel bad. But it did. The chicken and waffles and watermelon is a stereotype. According to the school district, an outside vendor, Aramark, planned to serve Philly cheesesteaks as seen on this February menu posted on the school's website. An earlier version of the menu posted in January did have chicken and waffles, but banana as a dessert for February 1st. District officials blame a change in leadership at Aramark for the mix-up. The middle school sent a letter to parents saying in part, we are extremely disappointed by the regrettable situation and apologize to the entire community for the cultural insensitivity displayed by our food service provider. We have met with Aramark. Uh, one of the things that I'm personally encouraged about is that they have expressed a, an interest in working and participating in the equity work, equity training work that we do in the Nyack schools. Aramark released a statement saying in part, we apologize for the unintentional insensitivity shown on February 1st, the first day of Black History Month. While our menu was not intended as a cultural meal, we acknowledge that the timing was inappropriate and our team should have been more thoughtful in its service. Some parents aren't buying it. This was February 1st and it was very purposeful and it wasn't discussed with the district. NYU confirmed to Eyewitness News it severed ties with Aramark in 2018 after it served NYU students ribs, collard greens and Kool-Aid for Black History Month. I hope they learn from their mistakes. In Nyack, Crystal Fanmore, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. <laughs> oh, this is the reason it's so funny. Because you have all these people who say, Oh, well, white person, you racist, you misogynist, you have a history of oppressing my poor black African American people of color. You should go educate yourself on what it means to be black in America in the year 2023. Not realizing if you send a dumb person out to learn something, they're going to come back with something even dumber. White privilege. Think about it. Whose flesh tone is this? I have brown band-aids in my classroom. I had to special order them. They're twice as much as these and they're hard to find and they're frequently out of stock. But when I hand a brown child a white band-aid, I am literally adding insult to injury, and I refuse to do that in my classroom. This is not like racism, it is racism. Anti-fatness is rooted in anti-blackness, and the reason why people are pursuing thinness is because they're pursuing proximity to whiteness. The reason why people hate fat people is because people hate black people, and appearing curvy or bigger is associated with blackness, especially black women, and that's why they're discriminated in the workplace, um, overly sexualized, and this has gone back for centuries and centuries. All systems of oppression, capital sexism, racism, it all comes back to white supremacy, which is the foundation of the fabric of America and rules every sector and aspect of our society. You have to be willing to teach these people your black experience, but instead you go around charging people $2,000 to learn what it means to be black and learn about racism, all just to get belittled by a bunch of women in a dinner table. In Charleston, South Carolina last summer, I get into my lift and the guy turned around and looked at me and he said, lady, he goes, I hate to have to say this to you, but if, if I get pulled over, you're just another black woman and uh, he's black. And he said, put your hands up, do as they say, do not make any trouble. He actually told you that. Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. It, to protect her. To protect him and to protect me. Where were you? That's the life he lives. He lives. And that's so, his reality. But that's, that's insane. But that, that's his reality, whether it's insane or no, not. No, I'm not saying he's insane. I'm saying it I is get it. insane. But it what is. we're saying is 
This is America. This, I, I want to ask also to stop acting shocked. So part of white feminism is is acting so surprised when we tell you. But it is. Why are you telling us not to act the way that we act if it is surprising? Or you segregate white people or non-black identifying individuals from showing up at experiences that are predominantly black so that they can learn about the black experience. This message is to all our would-be accomplices and white allies. This message is to all the white people who have BLM in their bio. If you really want to prove to black people that you love us and you care about us and you are down for the cause, do not go see that movie opening weekend. You buy your ticket, you give it to a black person or a black family who can't afford to go. And then you go sit at that theater in front of the doors. You make sure that every black person in that theater can enjoy that movie in peace. You make sure that you use your body to block us from anybody who would be coming in that theater to do us harm. That is your job. You can go see it on another weekend. Go see it on the second or third weekend. But the first weekend, that's for us. To do anything other than this is anti-black. On a very serious, serious, serious note, uh, not to be offensive, I'm gonna need a lot of you um, white creators in terms of what the plans are to do in celebrating Wakanda forever, let black, indigenous, and Latino, Hispanic creators speak. If you see an idea that you want to participate in and you think that, oh my God, like I think that's really good, stitch those videos. I'm being so serious when I say this. I don't care if you are a white Black Panther fan. I don't care about how much you love the stories. If you even use that as a retaliation to speak over these communities, I won't be nice and explain your ignorance. I will be advocating for your demise. I'm not saying you can't participate in the Wakanda hype, but be aware that a lot of the Wakanda hype in Black, African, Latino, Indigenous culture. So know when to sit the fuck down, shut the fuck up, and let BIPOC creators speak. You have all these people who shun what it means to actually be inclusive and then they get mad when people who are leaders, who are obviously not persons of color, do stereotypical shit like this. So I don't really feel bad for any of these kids because I know it's a symptom of the people who are a little bit older than them who spend their time bitching on TikTok about the white people don't know about my black experience yet still demanding that they go educate themselves. Listen, I understand. Everybody has these discussions about history. Should we learn it? Should we not learn it? Should we actually take the time to understand how our society as a nation has developed or evolved over time but honestly we should be learning about these things because if we don't we're gonna have stupid people getting upset that they spend all this time saying we want more diversity we want more activism we want more people understanding our culture not realizing they're not teaching people about their culture because it's cultural appropriation to go around and have braids go around and eat chicken have a fat ass do all these things you have to deal with the hand you've been dealt and sorry you been dealt a bad hand and it's a self-inflicted gunshot wound subscribe to the channel i will see y'all in the next one goodbye